Mm. Have you read Cry of the Beloved Country? Yes, I have. Oh. It's a one-sided Look, view. One-sided view, and it was written by an European. How could Europeans be having <laughs> one-sided view about their own the children radicals and radicals in every nation. Radicals, uh, you are radicals in South Africa, then. Eh? Oh, no, we're not. Good y'all, it's the Demachettes React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Who we got today, babe? Oh, well, today we're back with another American video. If you're new to us and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit that subscribe button, and also pull on your post notification bell, because we're on the road to 100K, and we cannot get that without you guys. Without further ado, let's get into the video. My voice is gone. My voice is down, you guys. It's down. I'm talking about... It's not cranking. Are Americans prejudiced in their opinions about Africa? They most certainly are. How could they be object objective about um, African Negroes while they are prejudiced against American Negroes? I disagree with you completely. Oh, we got a girl. I think that Americans are prejudiced for African natives and are very prejudiced against white people in Africa. Well, I'm getting confused. How can Americans be for and against Africans at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Well, if I say anything, I'm going to confuse you still more. As an Ethiopian, uh, I'm preju prejudiced against both white people and Negroes. Oh! Our discussion are four high school students from four different countries in Africa. Let me introduce them to you now. Here is... Amelia Day from the Gold Coast. Amelia is 18 years old. Here is Susan Rennie from the Union of South Africa. Susan is 17. Susan, um, do those school uniforms, are they always that short? Um, no, this is actually a dispensation. I'm a senior, but um, the other girls have to have them three inches above the knee. Very interesting study in native costumes. Thank you. Now let me introduce the boys, will you? Here are our baby for tonight. 15-year-old Nestin Venega from Ethiopia and 16-year-old Bonifaz Okakaja from Nigeria. Now, <clears throat> we do got to understand the audio from this video is from some time ago, so do you guys just yeah. be, you know, mindful to, about that and don't be in the comment section thinking that it's our audio. Yeah. Um, this is definitely the audio from this video that we're watching, so let's keep that in mind as well. Now, uh, let's start out by asking you what some of your own prejudices are. How about you, Amelia? Have you got any prejudices, say, against the Nigerians? Yeah, I have my own personal prejudice against the Nigerians. Coming from the Gold Coast, where there are many Nigerians, I, uh, I think that I sometimes look down on the Nigerians as somewhat inferior to us. Because, you see, the Nigerians who come to the Gold Coast are mostly beggars. So that's my opinion about Nigerians. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> um, I don't see how you have a case against for this your proposition or I say for this your stand. Actually, personally, I look towards the Gold Coast not as imperials, but perhaps as people that are individualistic and not working towards um, the communal effort towards the wealth of the nation. They, of course, have made great strides because they are a very small country and yet you have all these differences in their country. They, of course, have made great strides because they are a very small country and yet you have all these differences in their country. Nesbitt, how about your prejudices? You admitted to several at the beginning. Well, as I told you before, we have also our own prejudices against the African Negroes. We consider them as inferiors. We have, of course, our own reasons for saying so. Well, what are they, Nesbitt? Well, first thing, we consider ourselves to be of the lost tribe of Israel and not Negroes. It's only that our uh, fists are burned that we look uh, like Negroes. And also, we, uh, we've been uh, ruling part of Africa for, some, for hundreds of years uh, during uh, the 16th century, and uh, we ruled part of Egypt, Sudan, and as uh, far down as uh, Mozambique. Well, what about your prejudices against white men? Well, back home, if a woman marries a white man, she's considered mean. And when she dies, 
the priests never uh, pray for her as they would do for any ordinary man. Oh. It's just considered as suicide. Wow. Why do you think they look down on the white people so much? Well, for the first reason, uh, religiously they consider them unclean in heart because they eat pork and that's uh, uh, prohibited in uh, religion. Susan, you got any prejudices? <laughs> oh, I think I'm, I've got some pretty large prejudices. I, I think I'm very prejudiced against the foreign press, particularly the American press, because um, I've come up against a lot of discrimination myself while I've been here. As a South African, everywhere I go, particularly in the schools, at the moment I mention that I'm from South Africa, I, I'm discriminated against in the sense that, uh, well, the picture in South Africa, the situation has been so badly distorted and so exaggerated because racial news is sensational news. And so uh, journalists have so distorted the picture in South Africa that when I come over here, I'm looked down upon. And I've really felt this discrimination. I haven't been treated as just an individual and a human being. And I feel that the press is responsible for this. She feel the press is responsible for how they treat her in Africa, y'all. Okay. And then <clears throat> my, my, my brother from Ethiopia said that he don't... He don't like that boy said that it's white. A, yeah, real talk. He said <laughs> our face uh, burnt if we're considered a Negro, and then if a no. if a if a black man marries a woman, a white woman, or vice versa, that's a suicide mission. And I think the, who's the guy from the all the way to Na the left? Uh, Nigeria. He don't want to seem cool. Like he just ready to just vibe out. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, then the the lady with the inferior one. She okay. Said, yeah. So. Beggars. Okay. Oh, dang it, it's so much. This is starting off with a little bang, the bangy bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so she feel like the press has exaggerated what's going on. That's interesting to me. Of course, we were not alive during that time, so we don't know what the news were saying about right. South Africa. Facts, facts, the facts. American news were saying about South Africa. But it's kind of hypocritical. Because how can American press criticize South Africa when we was dealing with our own racial issues here? Mm. But for her to say that she haven't been treated as just an individual and human being, knowing what they was doing. Yeah, I don't know if she haven't been told her history. I mean, she was dealing with the history. She was the history. She well, is this. I mean, yeah, exactly. So I don't see how they can, you know, uncategorize themselves from the turmoil they added and then not feel uh, or understand why they're looked at the way they're looked at. Mm. That, like, and we also have to understand these are high schoolers. Okay, these they 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 are not the ones implementing the laws, but they are the ones who are affected, especially during this time. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Mm. Yeah, and I, it's interesting to see how the high schoolers are very vocal because if you look around these times when they had these greats that was leading to try to calm everything down in the community with mm -hmm. everybody being together and everything that was going on, the babies was out there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? From the high schoolers all the way up and down, like they was out there marching and trying to. Get, so they was really taking a beating as well yeah. when it came to these um, these laws that they was trying to fix. Yeah, and I understand this was an exchange student program who were holding these debates, but I truly feel like they should have had a person from the United States up there. Yeah. I really feel that way. I've been wanting to ask you a question for a long time. Okay. When we all came here, you just took to me. You like me very much, I can see, and I like you. But I know you are a South African, and I am an African. But why is it that out here you are very friendly towards me, but down in South Africa, you don't do the same towards the Negroes that are living there. Can you tell me? Um, well, it, it's the whole setup. I mean, South Africa, we have a pattern of life which is different to any other country in the world. Because you have the white population, and which, have which came to the country in 1652, and they are much more highly developed, coming from Europe with European backgrounds and traditions. And they have developed the country and have developed a, a highly civilized community. Whereas the Negro, the Bantu, as we call them in Africa, in South Africa, is a primitive, on a very primitive level. 
And the barrier in South Africa isn't so much colour as civilization and um, economic Excuse me, on that point, uh, we, we get into a very, very tense ground recently. Um, you talked about this question of uh, it not being a racial struggle, but a struggle of civilization. Well, uh, personally, you see, I, I quite, I sympathize with your situation. Because um, I couldn't live in a country, your economic position and perhaps your future well-being as a nation might be in danger if you allow the strong-hearted, driving Africans to take over the government. That is, of course, what will happen if they're given the vote. Uh, nonetheless, let us come now to that basic issue of racial segregation. <laughs> he just has to throw that in there. He's a little spicy. I mean, he was, I mean, he knew the future. <laughs> uh, I mean, no, I mean, you know, they, they fresh into apartheid, yeah. right? Why they keep describing the black South Africans as primitive or, or what was the other word the other guy called him? Um, they mentioned us as. Um, I, I I said salvage. I mean I said savages. Yeah yeah. But yeah. he said something else. Mm. Why they keep describing them in that way? And I said this in the other video. I I said, it, he he sat there speaking to the other panelists or debaters, whatever you want to call them, um, in a calm, respectful manner. Although they were debating. But back at in his home. He said that he, he was with the natives, but he still kind of looked down on them. And she said South Africa is unlike any country in the world. I agree. No country is alike. I agree. Right, 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 right. But that is still an African. The person that she befriended. Right, right, right. Right? So what's the difference between an African out of Ghana and an African out of South Africa? Yes, they have different cultures and all that, but at their core, they're still black Africans. I think she's using, both of them at the time, I think they was using the phrase of education as a reason why they don't talk to a certain group of people. Mm, yeah, they were. They, they're really using education as a barrier between who they can talk to and who they shouldn't talk to. And when you know less, you look, at, you look down upon, right? So... Mm -hmm. And that's why the other lady girl was talking about how they was inferior because they would come around as beggars, meaning they mm -hmm. wasn't working for themselves. There was All the Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't think that's mm -hmm. that's a case to where, uh, and, and even if you go back to the other one, to part one, the gentleman was like, well, why don't y'all just educate and help and yeah. invest and mix and do these type of things? And I don't think they ever came to a clear ground answer on that, but... I hear this uh, honorable gentleman from Ethiopia. <laughs> I think it's far time, it's high time Ethiopians come to the side where exactly they are. I usually wonder, are you Negroes? You are not Negroes. You say you are not Negroes. Are you white? You're not white. What are you? Well, I told you the answer. We are not Negroes. We are one of the lost tribes of Israel. It's just because our faces are burned. Yes, yes. Are, we look like I've got the point, you are lost. I think that makes a conclusive end to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if Susan and Mess. Why That's is hard, Ghana bro. and Nigeria still like this? <laughs> Why are they still I don't like, like I just don't like the phrase that he's using that his yeah, face is his burnt face is and he's, burnt. he's from the lost tribe. Understand it make that it seem like being darker is bad. Yeah. I love my melanin. I know this light may make make it seem like I'm light, but I love my melanin. Come on now. It's a bar. Have something very much in common. Neither one of you admit you're African. And yet both of you live in Africa and have for generations and generations. Well, um, I won't say that we, we, we naturally, because we're a different ethnical group, we're not Africans in the sense that the Negroes and um, other groups have, have actually originated in Africa. But um, I consider South Africa my homeland and my fatherland, and I always will. And there is a misconception that exists. Most people think that the white settlers came to South Africa and took the land from people who originally got who, Oh, no, it is not, and I'll prove it to you who came to South Africa and took it away as the whites came here to America and took it away from the indigenous uh, occupants. 
in 1662. Hold on, 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 that what they did was wrong to our Native Americans. Mm. Don't put us in that. They didn't even put us on the panel. Don't put us in that. I see. I hear you. But how can you use us to make it seem right? What they did wasn't right here. Oh my lord, my heart. Sound like that mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my lord. Has arrived at the Cape. The Bantu, as they are now known, the Negroes in South Africa, had, were still coming down from equatorial Africa, migrating. And it's a fact that they had not yet entered what is now known as South Africa, the borders of South Africa. The only indigenous occup um, occupants in, in, in Africa, South Africa at that time, were the Bushmen. And they were exterminated by the Bantu coming down. Uh, excuse me, Susan, on that point, I think you've read your history upside down. Mm. Uh, How come? Yes, you see, the exact thing that happened was that these um, Dutch men, I think they are Dutch men, they haven't got a place in their homeland. Oh, Not no, a you, means of I living. Just, I can just prove... Let me finish. All right, uh, and then I can prove finish. you how wrong your historical facts are. Oh, no, you know, your history is South African history. Mine is a bipartisan history. Um, well, these men came without any means of livelihood in their own country, with the economic background without any meaning at all, they came to South Africa. Oh, and thanks. the real fact is that as they came and uh, there was an influx of these Dutch people from their wanted homes, as there was an influx, the Bantus tended to were pushing the Bantus up into the country till came the Zulu War, in which the Zulus were finally defeated in the most bitter and agonizing struggle they had against this African order. Yes. I don't know where you get your historical facts from. I really I don't. I get my historical fact from, I think, is it Mr. Trebellian? He's a British historian. Oh, that's Mr. George than, Trebellian uh, knows nothing, then, and I'll say that. Because it so happens that these penniless whites, as you call them, didn't come out because they didn't have homes or because of any kind of persecution. They were sent out as officials of the Dutch East India Company to establish a refreshment <laughs> station for <laughs> ships passing around, the, uh, pass, passing around the bottom of the Cape. Just as American, uh, the Dutch settlers were sent out to America by the Dutch West India Company to settle and to make a refreshment station here. Now, I think if you had to turn around to the, uh, um, the, the um, as Dutch uh, settlers came out and said that they came out because they were penniless, they'd be just as indignant as I am. And as you say that the, the um, white settlers came and pushed the Bantu back, yes. they, it's a, a fact that the whites went, into, the, point, no, went into the interior uh -huh. of Africa no. and didn't come into contact even, never even saw a Bantu until 1795, which was practically a hundred years, oh, more than a hundred years after they had arrived in South Africa. How did you have the Zulu war? What brought it about? The Zulus had already, by the time, the Zulu, I think you must uh, can, uh, have a look at a map. Zululand is very far from the Cape where these people arrived. And in a hundred years, within a hundred years, after the arrival of the, of the white settlers, the Zulus had by that time, uh, the, uh, which, uh, the Zulus are a, a part of the Bantu group, the had Negroes. already come down to Natal. And then you've got the two groups, the one coming from the north, the um, one coming from the south, and they met. And that's where not, you get the Zulu war. It was not even a clash in the sense you are taking it. It was a, it even was the a British. It was a who, clash. It, the British in their benevolence. Or in it's like who was minding their business and who then came and invaded? Because <sighs> I feel like these two stories, right, so obviously they're born in a mixture of history in the making as everything was after happening. After everything. Or after everything. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so they're going off of what their fathers has taught them, you know? Their, their, the history that they were told to, yeah. uh, uh, taught, taught. Right, right. Um, uh, it's contradicting what we've learned, you know? Um, but I find it interesting how she said she don't consider, she said she considers South Africa to be her homeland. 
I miss, I'm paraphrasing. She considers South Africa to be her homeland, but she's not African. Well, our white South African supporters and, and coloreds and everybody else. Oh, y'all. Yeah. Everybody. They, they have told us they consider themselves South African. Mm -hmm. They've never, some of them never been to Europe. Some of them don't see Europe as their homeland. So it's just like going through history. And it's even with us, you know, with the African-American debate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just going through this. It's like, we, we have to acknowledge history. We have to learn from history, but we cannot forget history. Yeah, I feel like when you forget it, that's when you get these crazy beliefs that it was always a certain way. Why? All these times, yes. that's not the truth. Yes, why majority of our countries had to be formed in a way that divides us. I feel like that is the the basis of all I mean, our racial right. tension and across the globe. That's facts because people come over, they colonize, and they. she said they brought companies down mm. and they built it the that Dutch, way, the yeah. Dutch. But in other words, they came and took over what was already already a civilization. Mm -hmm. But... but I don't like that she threw us in there. <laughs> don't throw us in there if nobody on that panel to defend us. Right. Because what they did wasn't right. They, they, what they did wasn't right. And, and our country is still paying for what they did. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because they've seen the fact that this thing is not good, they even were exercising a temporary force upon the people. Boniface, just to make things more complicated for you and Susan, I've heard a third interpretation of this which might settle it that was the fact that the bantu were a migratory people oh and that God. it may be true that at some point when the whites came in there weren't any bantus there because they were migrating somewhere can, else but, but but look this is all past history now i'd like to hear something from mesfin and uh, amelia on their interpretation of south african no, history but almost so rather Let, let's bring it up to the present <coughs> can't we Yes. Yes, yes, Let's, yes. We bring it up. <laughs> well, come back just a minute, Sue, to your uh, violent prejudices against the press because they're misrepresenting what goes on in South Africa. Do you want to clarify that a bit? <laughs> yes, I would. Will you? No. Nah. Mm. Well, I can. I, I know one outstanding example of uh, misrepresentation. We read in an American, um, I think it was a magazine. I won't give the name, although I could very easily. This journalist quoted Dr. D. F. Milan, who is an ex. A Prime Minister of South Africa as saying, and I quote, the Negro does not need a home. He can sleep under a tree. Well, not only is this absolutely fictitious, but he forgot to mention the fact that brick and concrete trees, known to most people as houses, are costing thousands, millions of dollars of the white taxpayers' money annually. Oh. What, what did you say? I didn't get the point. Said what houses? <laughs> well, you see, this... Cause my mom dropped it and he came back with that. Okay. I like, didn't get the point. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "What did you say?" Cause I didn't get it. What you trying to say? Say it one more time for the people in the back. Um, Journalist said that Dr. Yes, Milan, I got that point. You say what houses costing the government millions of dollars? I what said houses? concrete and brick and cement houses for, for the Bantu people. But is, these are the Bantus that are working for you in the factories. How did you get the money? They got the money, they mined the gold, got the gold, and you sold the gold outside. You got the money, and you say the money is yours. Of course you it can't is. Do. That's a contradiction, Look, please. Look, we came along. We bought the machinery. We developed the mines. From where did you get the machinery from, from, from the mines in Johannesburg? Do you no, own the mines? No, we got Who our machinery. The mines? We got our machinery from Great Britain. Who from the money that was picked, which was got with the diamonds and How the did you get the diamonds alluvial. out of the ground? No native la labor there, How did you get the uh, uh, diamonds out of the ground? They I weren't dug out of the ground. They were alluvial diamonds. No, no, no uh, native labor there, my boy. What did the natives do? Oh, oh, you know what, uh, Suzanne? What's more one point? I'm going to have to rewind it again just to get another one of these from Sierra. <laughs> Everything. Bruh, hold up. Ooh, I had to. Don't you, my boy, me girl. That's what she said. She said, my boy. I was talking on the fact that she kept touching them. This is oh, a panel. Why are oh, you touching me? Oh, they not civilized. Like Why are you person. touching me? Y'all might have messing up. What? I'm trying to tell girl, you. Girl, if you don't get up off me. No. Why are you doing all that? Moving what? around. Stop all that. Girl, be civil now. 
Yeah, the lady, the, the um, the moderator should have said, "Hands to yourself, please." Yes, yeah, the first group it, was no good. No way she should have been able to put her hands on him during a conversation like that. Girl, you get anxious all you like, but don't put your hands on him, nah. Like, girl, girl. So I rewinded it just so we can get that. Um, oh, it infinity. was the my boy, like. The Okay, hold on, let's I'll do it. I'll do that. The diamonds out of the ground. No native labor there, by the way. How did they get the uh, uh, diamonds out of the ground? They I weren't dug out of the ground. They were alluvial diamonds. No, no, no uh, oh. native labor there, my boy. What do the ladies do? Ah, uh, you know what, uh, Suzanne? What's more, oh, one point you must get right down to the cross of the matter is that in this country, the Africans are really the backbone of your economy. Ooh. And it is one of that case where you get this question of man's inhumanity to man. And every day you come here to complain about misrepresentation in the American press. In the actual matter of fact, the American press is given uh, a fairly uh, good view of the whole situation because they South have Africa? a color problem themselves. Have you been to South Africa? I, I wouldn't even pay a penny to go there. <laughs> well, then, how can you sure. talk? How can you talk? Because I have the facts. People who come in there get every people no, no, no means of living. How can I go there? Well, I, I want a house. I want a home. I want position in society. Uh, well, look, they're getting it. <laughs> they're getting but, uh, exactly what they want. Oh. I'd love to hear from Amelia and Mesfin what their, oh, pic if their picture of South Africa is the same as uh, Boniface's. It should be the same weight. Well, yeah. coming from Africa myself, um, naturally, I, I would be a little embittered against the whites in South Africa because from what we hear, they are mistreating the Africans there. But personally, I have no preconceived ideas against the whites because... Frankly, I haven't been there, and you can't always trust what you hear from people or what you read from the press. So I have no solid facts about so South African problems. Actually, I myself am against the South Africans, because I mean the white people in the South Africa, because in whose house can one come and take one away uh, the, uh, they haven't the taken property? Away because what they are doing now, the white people are mining and taking the property for themselves, and that's what they shouldn't do. Because the native people who are living there, they should, they should have uh, what is the property of theirs. Uh, well, actually, before I came from uh, Ethiopia, I was reading about this in the press, and they were pretty hot about it. They were against the white people. They, the same thing could happen to them, of course. Um, on this uh, oppression business, if you say the Bantu in South Africa oppressed, how do you account for this fact? That every year, regularly, hundreds of thousands of Bantu and Negroes from other ter territories adjoining South Africa, such as Portuguese, East Africa, etc., are invading our country illegally in spite oh, of the law. Are they coming for oppression? They know what goes on in South Africa, and they come back year and year again. Those who have worked in South Africa and have been sent back, come back. Are they coming back to seek oppression? Your know, query, this does not answer what I'm driving at. The Africans have the land. They oh, were no, there they before you. The land, and they they mine the gold. All right, wait, wait oh, a minute. Please. Now, let me get my point straight before you go. They mine the lines. They get the diamonds. You sell the diamonds outside. And when you get the diamonds, you say they, they, they are not. Um, they are not to be given their own fair share of the quota. Mm. Have you read Cry of the Beloved Country? Yes, I have. How? It's a one-sided view. One-sided view, and it was written by an European. How could Europeans be having <laughs> one-sided view about their own They're king radicals and king? Every nation. Radicals. Uh, you are radicals in South Africa, then. Eh? Oh no, we're not. Look, uh, Mesfin was just talking about, and all of you, about the importance of news about South Africa in the Gold Coast, in Nigeria, and in Ethiopia. I'm wondering whether news about racial problems in the United States also takes up a good deal, a deal of space in your countries. Does it in the Gold Coast? Yes, very, because after all, the Negroes come from the Gold Coast, and we feel very badly about what the Americans are doing about to our Negroes. Um, I know that one of my ancestors probably came here too. And from what I hear in the Gold Coast, the Americans don't give the Negroes a fair chance of activities here. For instance, they don't give the Negroes the same education as they give the white Americans. And also, for, uh, for instance, a Negro wouldn't be permitted to go to ride on the same bus with a white man. Yeah, as for times. me, I don't think that color color, which is purely a natural thing, can be so such a great bar to human understanding. Ooh, that's a bar. Yes. You can stop it right there. Everybody close up, go yes. home, close your books, take your towel off, kick your shoes, all y'all good to go. How, love, let's repeat what she just said, I Joe. love how she can sit there so calm, so poised, and speak so eloquently and without anger. 
Just speaking the pure facts. Yeah, facts. Because how can color be a great bar to the human understanding? We're all people at the end of the day. Golly, bro. And um, I think America is a democratic nation, as it calls itself. But this one thing really doesn't show it's it's all very well as a democratic country. Amelia, you've been in the New York area for about a month now. Does the picture you had of America that you've just described correspond to what you've uh, seen here in the schools and the communities you've been in? Well, I, when I came up here, most of the people in New York told me that segregation is only practiced in the South, but in the North, they have now begun to have integration. Well, I didn't think much about it. But one day after school, I went to a restaurant with a friend of mine, and she's an English girl. And we sat there and waited to be served by the a waiter. Mm -hmm. Well, the waiter just came around, looked at us and passed us, and went around serving others who came in after us. Well, I, didn't, I knew at once what he was doing, but my friend didn't know it. So she walked up to the waiter and said, well, we've been waiting here so long, won't you serve us? The waiter just looked at her hard and then looked back at me. And then I told my, the girl that we better leave the restaurant because I understood it. But the girl was shocked, but I wasn't surprised because mm. that was what I was expecting to find. Wow. Yeah. So this was the North. Imagine what our people who were living during this time right. in the South were dealing with. Our family. So, Turn the heat up. So given that... Y'all can understand our views on some things a little bit better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Americans. Yeah. Well, in my country... No, uh, I mean your experience with segregation my, here. Have you had well, any? Well, when I came to America, I was in Dwight Morrow High School, and uh, I went for a haircut in the city. Too? I looked up for a barber shop. I went there, and they told me they were busy. I went to a second one. The same thing happened, and to a third one, too. How about Dwight Morrow? Are there any Negro students there? Well, there are quite a lot of them. In fact, about uh, three, four Negroes in the school. And they are well treated as, as the other white people, and I'm happy about it. In fact, one of the vice presidents of the school is uh, a Negro himself, Linton Marsh. How about you, Boniface? Have you met segregation at all here? I have not met it. I think uh, the most pretty part, I mean, lucky. Because I've been looking forward to get the segregation against me, but I have not got it yet. It's uh, an irony that a South African will get it, and I wouldn't get it myself. Well, Susan really <laughs> has felt some here. It's interesting uh, that you're the only one who has not. Uh, yes? What are we after now? I think um, we'll come back to this question of the... I think it was the United States racial problems. Well, um, I feel, of course, that the outlook here has continued to be better. You do? I do. Mm. Um, but on the other hand, this racial segregation, which of course I do, and I'll always make that point clear, is an outcrop of um, insecurity in economic uh, conditions, and also uh, somehow low-pointed opinions and all that sort of thing. Um, provides other people with that same uh, pretext by which they could criticize the United States. Asians and Africans can't understand why a country devoted to the greatest ideals of um, Freedom and democratic government should as well dis discriminate among their citizens. Ooh. We didn't get to ask Sue whether in South Africa her newspapers play up racial news in America too. Oh yes, they play up a great deal. Um, well, naturally we get all these stories about the riots at Clinton, Tennessee, and how they had to escort these people to school but and bring out the National Guard and oh. so on and so forth. Yeah, that's what it's what I mean. may interpret. I, I think there are more riots in the Johannesburg area in the Negro area than they are in Tennessee. Am I right, Susan? Oh, okay. He's trying to get a point across about South Africa, y'all. The Nigerians and the South Africans. Not a, don't, don't do none of them negative comments. I'm talking about during this <laughs> time, do the 1950s. Yeah. What was the relationship like? Because this is the second panel and the Nigerians always going at the South Africans, taking up for the black South Africans. The 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 Ghana Ghanaians, mm -hmm. Ghana thing, Ghanaians. Say, yeah, they always have the same sense. And the Ethiopians just looking for a haircut. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> they say I don't have no parts in it. Right. I don't want a haircut. <laughs> what a bubble that! I need to say something about with the Clippers. 
when oh, they go God. through my hair. Yes, this is crazy. this is a very interesting panel. There are a couple of uh, rats. Yeah. No, not. I wouldn't say rats. And uh, wait a minute. In the Johannesburg <laughs> area, you have only one telephone to the whole Negro population. Oh, that rubbish! Are... Yes. Where do you get your facts from? Facts, he facts, just... facts from books, books, books written on countable terms. He pick enough. He, he reached with to that get one. He reached with that one. He tried to get the shoulder tap. South Africa. <laughs> well, that's, a, we are not that's the only absolutely country ridiculous. World. That is uh, absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely I'll, I'll, look, I'll get this for you afterwards. There are not. I, I can. All right, let me finish you. my question. Now. Let me finish my statement, please. No, one the one telephone. Prejudice. Prejudice. Let me with finish so my much ignorance. One, one telephone in the whole Johannesburg district. Why? They don't want the Africans to have a means of communication by which they could rebel against the people. I'm speaking from facts. John Gunter wrote that. That's absolutely ridiculous. And ridiculous. I think if you try and... Oh, you didn't say it was wrong. It is ridiculous. It's not wrong. It's wrong. It is wrong. Ridiculous, but not wrong. That is no fact. <laughs> well, they they have not you could have got your uh, facts from what... I feel like they picking up. They keep sitting them right next to each other. I mean, but this <laughs> the panel, though, babe, and... Even yeah. though it was sitting across, I felt like she would have been reaching over to touch his shoulder. <laughs> I mean, if, mm, I just, I think it would have been even more interesting mm. if they had somebody from America there on both sides, black and white. That been one -sided, uh, it's not uh, one-sided, uh, Ms. Finn. It's it not one-sided. It should be, because no. what you've got is almost, uh, uh, all what, what you've got all right. is... Uh, I, can I can give you four concurrent, John Gunter wrote that. An African newspaper in Nigeria wrote that. A British paper wrote that. Uh, a Lebanese paper wrote that all the world prejudice against Well, you can't so much criticize the country without actually going there and seeing what is happening. You do I don't need yeah, to go do. there. I told you I wouldn't you be able to go there. Because How can I go we there? We have come to America and we are looking what, what they are doing in America. We might have got uh, false ideas of America. In America, the outlook has continued. Go ahead, Y'all in the north. If they went to the south, they would have a better view on the racial problems. Mm -hmm. In the north. Right, don't be up there in the north talking about they don't make good gumbo, but you never been to the south to eat some. <laughs> right. Now come get you a bowl now, stop right. being shy. Mm-hmm. Continue to be better. In South Africa, the outlook has continued to be worse. Well, and that, that, that exactly messed me. As a matter of fact, we're progressing. Wait a minute, Susan. That exactly messed me is um, what, Susan, I think you better take care about this. When these Africans come to learn that they are really being discriminated, I think they're learning now. And when they rise, you know what has been imposed upon the people by law? Or what has been suppressed when you get the people really suppressed? When they rise, they shall throw away that same government. And you are... Well, let me... Look, you had your speak. I'm going to have mine now. It so happens that this apartheid, which you most probably have misinterpreted already... No, you misinterpreted Just a minute, yourself. let me speak. Nothing. ...is working towards a solution in South Africa. And it so happens that there will be no riots. Nothing like that. This apartheid policy, which I will afterwards speak to you about, seeing I, I think there's only very little time, is working towards getting self-realization and self-rights for the black people within their own areas. And I think if you make a careful study of apartheid, you'll see, and already they've started legislating in South Africa and spending vast sums of money. Within the next 20 years, we're going to have a solution to our problems. I'll spend 15 years. Next 20 years. Let's do a little quick. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in 20 years? It's, it's funny to me that they sit up here and speak about how they're loving, they're loving this apartheid law that they're operating in. And then when he speak about how the people are being treated out there, she's saying that's not real. I, I, I'm, I'm confused by how they come up with this, like how she's coming up with this. Uh, that's like somebody saying Jim Crow is good for the black people. Girl! Oh... So, we went into our handy dandy Google. And what we got, big? They got something about Formula One. <laughs> Ooh, um, let me see. Let's see. Let's see, let's she see. Say let's no see. riots. Oh, oh, oh. History didn't turn out right for her. Mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> Learning it, and every day I become more prejudiced against South Africa. I don't need to spend a day more. And but I think you're getting your facts from the wrong source. Not That's from the I wrong source, please. You're what? getting your facts from the government laid out principles and practices. Well, I live there. I live there. I ought to know. 
I don't you want to live there. You live 7,000 miles away. How can That's you That's not better. I have a home. I have Read, a house. I can walk anywhere I have. Mm. Unfortunately, oh, our time is running out. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm wondering if anybody's got a final word to say on this subject of prejudice and where they come from. Yes, sir. Well, <clears throat> folks, I understand I'm becoming an African, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think, Susan, I'm sure that uh, government policies some, sometimes conflict because you and I got, get on so well together, and I'm sure that this time our governments are in the wrong. So if we get on together, I'm sure in the future they will try to understand each other better. One of it? I think the important thing to consider is whether on the balance, um, the direction in which a nation is going is the right one. Um, if two different, even contradictory opinions or points of views can be hospitable, it can be existing hospitality in the United States. You're talking about Amelia's point at the beginning now. At the beginning, yes. Yes, when she said that Americans, she was confused because they could be pro and anti at the same time. Yes. Can have uh, hospitality in the United States. This is progress. It may not be, it is not weakness. The dynamism of a democracy the dynamism that gives of hospitality to yes. two points of view. I'm sorry, that's all the time we've got. We'll be back again next. All right, y'all, that was another one, bro. Um... um they went they went off like you said uh nigeria south africa they they had it bop, 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 non-stop bop, 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 bop. um honestly guys i don't feel like this debate panel that they have would have been possible in the south that speaks for itself yeah i don't think the news would have aired it in mm. the south i don't think any of the officials would have allowed, well, no matter where they from, them to be in the room on the same debate table with with Susan. That's how bad it was back then. But thank That's God for change. That is true. You're thank right. God you got a point about that. Yeah. I mean, if you look around today, we see so much new developments and how things are operating. Still, some some uh, bumps and bruises around mm -hmm. the areas that needs to be cleaned up. You know what I'm saying? But overall, the people are still developing and doing what they got to do. Yeah. So that's a good thing, how it is now. Yeah. Now, y'all done requested all these debates. I hope the topics are not just about the apartheid. Right. Like, there got to be other issues going on. Unless this is what they're just doing right now, like, because they're speaking yeah. on prejudice. So, yeah. yeah. Got anything else you want to say, babe? That's it, babe. All right, babe. <laughs> All right, babe. You calling them, babe? I'm calling y'all, babe. <laughs> All right, y'all. So thank y'all for watching and hanging around with us in this video, man. Make sure you tap, tap in into the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Drop a comment down below, man. we see y'all in the next video. Peace. Peace.